Widespread rain during the last week forced farmers in parts of the state out of the field, but it also provided needed moisture to Nebraska's ranges and pastures. With calving wrapping up, many producers are likely starting to look at putting their animals on grasses. UNL Extension educator Aaron Berger joined us this week from Kimball to discuss spring turnout and whether a delayed release might benefit farmers and ranchers in some areas of the state. Yeah, you know, I think pasture conditions are kind of variable depending on how they were managed through the drought. We had some excellent moisture last fall. If you remember the storm system that caused some of the flooding, especially on the South Platte River, a lot of that moisture moved its way up into at least the western third of the panhandle. And so we went into the winter with a good soil moisture profile. A lot of that soil moisture is still there. And so some of the cool season grasses are starting to get up and going. Uh, the last two months, in terms of the south panhandle anyway, we haven't received very much in terms of significant precips. So the top is drying out, and I think that's starting to delay some of this cool season grass from growing. Is this a year where some producers might want to think about delaying turning out their cows into those pastures? Yeah, you know, I think it sure is. And depending on the grass resources you have, depending on uh, the condition of that rangeland, you know, if we can delay turnout, what we really do is give that plant a greater opportunity to uh, grow more leaf material. Uh, we allow it to root a little deeper, use some of that moisture that's further down in the profile. And then it also allows us to really more effectively capture and keep uh, some of these thunderstorm rains that might come more quickly. In the, at least in the western part of the state, we had a very open winter, uh, good opportunity to graze out, use a lot of crop residue, and so there's probably more carryover hay than sometimes we might expect to have. And so I think this is a year where we might actually think about feeding a little longer in some cases, delaying turnout on that rangeland, uh, giving those cool season grasses a little time to recover again from the drought stress and uh, get some more leaf material up, and hopefully capture some rain here in the next 30 days. Should there be a change in stocking rate? And I guess you could look at that both ways. If you are going to delay turnout and have the extra feed and forage, and if you don't have it and you need to turn out right away. You know, I think from a delay and stocking rate standpoint, I think you probably want to assess range condition. If you really feel like uh, your range has gone backwards because of the drought and you need to reduce your total stocking, then I think that's something you can look at. You know, if we're looking at a five month grazing season and we delay turnout by uh, say two or three weeks, we've already, already reduced the total amount of forage we're going to be harvesting over that uh, period of time if we move say from a traditional five month grazing season down to maybe close to or four. So I think looking at the length of time the cattle are going to be grazing, uh, looking at the range condition and uh, where it's at and just available soil moisture you have. The other really critical thing in my mind is the month of May is really critical, at least in the western part of the state for us in terms of grass growth. And so moisture over the next 30 days is really going to set the table, so to speak, on our grass growth for these cool season grasses. When the cattle do get out there, how do you make the most of the winter annuals that are still left in the pasture and still offer something of nutrition? Yeah, you know, I think the cool conditions we had in the fall with that ample available moisture, a lot of our winter annuals that are our invaders like cheatgrass sure have been coming on aggressively this spring. And so this is almost going to sound contradictory when I say I think some pastures could benefit from delayed turnout. But if you have a situation where you have a lot of cheatgrass there, uh, it's kind of a use it or lose it type situation. And so I think what's ideal in some cases, if you can go ahead, get cattle out, use that cheatgrass while it still is palatable to them, and then maybe actually look at taking them to a different pasture and or even bringing them back and feeding them hay for a while to allow those other later developing native cool season grasses to go ahead and come back and compete uh, is really a situation that probably could be beneficial in some situations. We know cow-calf producers will get a good price for the calf that they're going to sell if they're going to sell it, but what kind of input prices are they facing right now? You know, our input costs, as I look at our cost of production, are really kind of sobering when we look what's happened over the last five years. We continue to have a shortage of grass in Nebraska, and uh, prices on a per pair basis, on a rental rate per pair per month, or on a, a stocker yearling or a replacement heifer, really continue to increase rapidly. Uh, there's a long list of people looking for grass and a short list of people that have it available. So when you look at our feed cost right now uh, for summer grazing and you include some winter cost, it's pretty sobering. We can get $600 just in feed cost pretty easily in a cow-calf pair and that doesn't include 
uh, really many extras from a feed standpoint. You look at the UNL drought monitor and you see, Aaron, that 90% of Nebraska is still in some form of drought. At some point, does drought become a threat to restocking the cow herd? You know, I think it's certainly going to make people think about what they do. You know, as we look at uh, the cow herd numbers, though, and we look at the prices of these calves, there's a lot of incentive right now to get heifers bred and to begin to start rebuilding the cow herd. So I think people are going to be pretty uh, aggressive still at this point about continuing to retain replacement heifers. Uh, even with a high priced feed uh, from a forage standpoint, some of these grain prices and harvested feeds have come down certainly from where they were in 2012 and 2013. And so I think uh, dry lotting some of these animals uh, still is a probably a favorable option right now with current feed prices with the value of them as a bred female on today's market. The latest U.S. drought monitor from UNL shows 93% of Nebraska is now in drought. That's the largest percentage since October 15, 2013.